very young, delicate democracy where they have huge problems for the last four years to come up with economic growth. And the people I spoke to who work on democracy assistance on a daily basis, they say this is the threat we are facing. If the government is not able to also create benefits of an open society and system, we are very afraid what type of attraction this might give to non-democratic forces in the country. The other thing is, of course, checks and balances. Civil society, free media, we all know it, but it's so important because, of course, undemocratic politicians can be elected in democratic ways. We've seen it happen in, in, in many countries. But still, coming from a country as Holland, I'm confident we have some politicians which I consider not being real uh, Democrats. But I'm confident, even if they would come to power, that we have a very strong system of checks and balances, strong civil society and free media, which will never allow Holland to become an illiberal democracy. Um, this is, of course, an important aspect, so we need to continue to support also those aspects of society which, uh, which are actually providing the protection against illiberal democracies. And then perhaps it's not a, it's not a um, popular thing to say in a parliament, which is here, of course, mainly to make legislation, but in the end, we see many countries where legislation is fine, legislation is in place, there is anti-discrimination legislation. Uh, on paper, if you look at it, the uh, uh, electoral law is written in a way where countries like Holland, France, Britain can learn a lot from it. But still, the practice is different. And how to change the culture, how to change the culture, for instance, where it takes it all in a society, how to change public opinion, uh, this is a process where we see this is, takes much longer than just legislative acts. And how to, how to tackle this one is also much more difficult to answer than when we see a flaw in legislation. And let me say a couple of words. I know a lot will be said also on, on Hungary and why we are here also in this European Parliament. I'd like to point out that the situation of Hungary has been many times debated in the European Parliament, also since I became a member of the Parliament last year. And as we are speaking here today, I, um, at, this, at this same moment, we have a meeting of the Civil Liberties Committee, the working group also of the SND group, discussing the resolution for next month's plenary, where it is again on the agenda after the statements made by Viktor Orban on the death penalty. Of course, it created a lot of uh, reaction, but also on what, what's happening on, on this uh, so-called uh, civil yeah, national consultation on, on migration. Uh, we are a bit late, but we are coming. Of course, we had the debate first in Parliament, and we are coming and preparing right now our text for next week. Just to go into these two, two issues briefly, I think that Franz Timmermans, being Vice President of the European Commission and responsible for the rule of law issues in Europe, was very clear on the impossibility of reinstating the death penalty. We don't need to debate that uh, here. It, it speaks for itself. He also stated that the Commission would not hesitate for a second to start infringement procedures and the so-called Article 7 mechanism if necessary. In this case, it would be a clear and obvious breach of the fundamental common values and principles. Moreover, these principles are laid down in the treaties, and the death penalty is ruled out by law in the European Union by means of these treaties, which would make it a clear cut case if it would make it to the Court of Justice, the European Court of Justice. However, this is all much less clear on the other breaches of fundamental values in Hungary regarding the national consultation on migration, for example. In this audience, I do not need to elaborate on the other worrying patterns which constitute the general decline in media freedom, freedom of speech, and the respect for fundamental rights in Hungary. It seems that Viktor Orban is always looking for the confrontation with the EU. First, he's going over the edge, and after being called back by the European Commission, he changes the legislation in such a matter 
that it is technically difficult for the EU to do anything more, but its aims are still achieved. In this way, the rule of law and fundamental freedoms are structurally at risk in Hungary. But as long as no specific EU law has been breached, there's only so much that we as politicians in Brussels can do. And in order for this to change, several political groups have been calling for a revision of Article 7 and the rule of law framework, which would be applicable for all member states of the European Union. It is important that more political tools would become available so that breaches like this could be more effectively fought and that political leaders like Orban have less room for maneuver when it comes to our core values and principles in Europe. However, I also believe that real change, like I said, can only be achieved in the end by the people and politicians in Hungary itself. For me, the protest against the proposed internet tax last year was a great example where political change was enforced by a united call from the population. And of course, the framework needs to be, and the, the framework and the protection mechanism, that's where the EU comes in place. In the end, I strongly believe that change will come, can only come from within Hungary itself. We need to find this unity in the political sphere as well, I'm finalizing, in the European Parliament as well as in Hungary. Where internet democratic forces are in charge, the democratic parties should unite in their efforts to fight them. I've said this before and I will say it again. We should not accept that this debate results into a left-wing versus right-wing political discussion, because it isn't. This is a discussion where we as Democrats, from the left and the right and the center, should unite to, in order to protect the system Europe has proudly, I think, built up. For all these reasons, I'm very glad that we are here together with people from various <coughs> political backgrounds and various political points of view. I'm very much looking forward to the debate, and I hope that it will be a pleasant and fruitful day. Thank you very much. Thank you.